Oh, what's up, bro? So you probably know that one or more of your habits is bad for you. Like you can see that it makes your life worse every time you do it, but it's like your mind and your body gets hijacked by like this stimulation gremlin inside of you. And you don't want to do it anymore, but you just keep finding yourself automatically relapsing over and over again. And that hurts. It makes you feel weak, like you don't have any control over your life. I mean, it did for me at least. So an addiction is defined as when you have a strong physical or psychological need or urge to do something or use something, even if you know that it causes you harm. And to share my experience, here's a list of all the addictions that I used to have. So firstly, we have video games from the age of five to 20, then sugar and junk food from the age of three to 21, porn from the age of 13 to 21, social media from the age of 13 to 20, nicotine from the age of 14 to 21, TV and content from the age of five till 22, weed from the age of 18 till 20, ego lifting, which causes injury from the age of 15 till 20, and then caffeine from the age of 12 till 21. So in terms of the problem with these addictions, right, I had like a handful of meaningful goals that I wanted to pursue over that period of time, like my teenage years, right? And these simply included being happy and confident, having a body that I was proud of, that looked attractive, right? and being successful in the school or work that I was pursuing at the relevant time. Like these aren't very complicated goals and I feel like we all kind of share them, but like these addictions made it 10 times harder to make any progress towards these goals, right? It kind of felt like having weights chained to my ankles. I had to like drag along with me while I was trying to make progress towards these things and just live my life. But it was like some part of me was obsessed with the stimulation that came from these addictions. It was just like this invisible force that would pull me towards, you know, taking another bite of the food, hitting the vape one more time or picking up the controller again. And it's just like I couldn't control it, even though I could see that it was making my life worse. Now, I know some people's brains are going to be like, oh, well, some of those habits are normal. Some of them are fine. Yeah, you're just being a bit dramatic here. But like, the thing is, it's just not because 200 years ago, most of those things didn't even exist, right? You need to understand that these things that you're addicted to have been like engineered by scientists to be as addictive as possible. They're like modern inventions that hook into your brain. So like, now, nah, bro, scrolling on TikTok for two hours a day is not like a normal human activity that you should be spending your time doing. That shit didn't exist. The thing is today, we're just conditioned to like have this weird routine that's full of socially accepted levels of addiction, right? And if living that kind of lifestyle makes you happy, that's absolutely fine. Honestly, there's no problem with that. But I've taken these addictions all the way to the extreme, right? So if you imagine a scale of one to 100, right? Every incremental increase in usage of these addictive substances, my life quality has gotten incrementally worse every single time. But the logic that me and Shez had when we were in second year of uni and we quit a lot of these things was, okay, well, if I cut all these addictions down completely, my level of life satisfaction is gonna dramatically increase, right? And then if I replace it with positive things, my life quality is gonna be at its absolute maximum. So why would I not do that? Why would I do myself a disservice and just diminish my life quality for a bit of stimulation that I'm gonna forget about the next day anyway? And for a long time, like every other addict does, I sat in this blissful ignorance of like, oh yeah, I can quit whenever I want. I don't have a problem, it's absolutely fine. But when I was at the age of 15, I actually saw for the first time that I couldn't quit whenever I wanted, right? So let me tell you the story of that quickly. I'm not telling you the story to, you know, for fun or for you to be like, oh yeah, what a loser, such a crackhead, right? I'm not telling you it for that. I'm telling you because I understand what it feels like to have an addictive personality, which I feel like is becoming increasingly common these days. So when I was around 14, 15, that's when my nicotine addiction first started. I remember my little friend came over to me holding a little cigarette that he had stole from his parents or something. And we smoked it. And that was the first time I ever tasted nicotine and started getting hooked to it. I very quickly got heavily addicted to smoking. And then we moved over to vaping shortly after that because we were trying to be healthy and protect our lungs, right? I don't mean like these weak little elf bars. I mean like a strong box mod vape with like some actual electricity behind it, right? Whilst using the strongest possible liquid you could get your hands on. And like a couple of little crackheads, me and Shez used to fill our lungs with that nicotine, hold our breath. So we got like a big head rush. And then we were just like sitting there, just like enjoying this rush, right? And I know it's like, oh, haha, cringe, you're such a weirdo, why would you do that? But like, the reason I'm telling this is because I couldn't stop. I was so addicted to that feeling. And I feel like everyone's just addicted to like a lesser degree of the same thing, if that makes sense. But when I realized I couldn't quit was when I went on holiday to Turkey for the first time after I started my addiction, right? So I didn't want my family to know that I smoked or vaped or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, take time off. I'm just gonna be fine. I'm just gonna go on holiday, have a nice time, come back and I'll start again, right? But that's not how it went down. So I went to Turkey with no nicotine, right? First day was all right. 
Next day is when the withdrawals start. And that's when I realized, oh, I can't go without this. I started being so aggy, being so easily irritated. I had this like background hum of anxiety going on all of the time, right? Like I wasn't myself anymore. Like my baseline had significantly dropped down without the substances in my life. Like even when I would go to sleep, I would have dreams about picking up the vape and like, you know, using it. So now I couldn't ignore it anymore. I finally knew that I was addicted, right? I knew that I had a dependence on a substance to feel a certain way. It's becoming so common for people to use substances to like maintain this consistent baseline of stimulation, right? But because I squeezed every last drop of dopamine out of these substances, I've seen that that's a game that you just can't win no matter how much you play. It's really annoying as well because you can really clearly see these things are having a negative impact on you. Like with the vape, my throat was always like kind of sore. I always had like blocked sinuses and stuff. My cardio was terrible. Like I couldn't breathe properly when I was running and stuff like that. And like with food as well, like I would be doing a bulk, but I would eat a bunch of dirty food while smoking weed, right? So my body would just be kind of flabby, kind of chubby. Like it wouldn't look nice. It wouldn't look good and attractive like it could have if I was doing the right things. But that being said, in one year, me and Shes quit all of our addictions, right? Not just one of them, all of them. And most of these we had had for like a decade, right? So it's not a small thing. So what I wanna do is I wanna tell you the natural quitting strategy that me and Shes used successfully to quit all of these vices, right? And it's got three steps to it. Firstly, do not go cold turkey. Secondly, you have to use the conscious taper method. And thirdly, you need to fill the vacuum. Right, so let's go into these. We'll get to the first point, do not go cold turkey, right? And I've looked this up. Apparently, when you quit nicotine, there's a 97% failure rate for people who try and go cold turkey. Like it literally just doesn't work. I tried many times, it just doesn't work. You always end up relapsing. And it's the same for all the other addictions, right? I literally remember this friend that Shez and I had, right? He would always say he's gonna quit vaping. He'd get his vape, he'd throw it into a river, right? So he could never use it again. And then three days later, he would go and buy a new one. And that would cost him like 30, 40 pounds. And he did that like four or five times. So you can just see, it's just a cycle you can never break by going cold turkey. And again, this applies to all the other things as well. Like I tried to quit social media, but two days later, I found myself scrolling on Instagram reels using the Safari. So not even on the app, but like on Safari, Safari, I was on Instagram scrolling through reels like you just can't and again you need to remember all of these addictions are like modern creations they want you to have anxiety when you quit they want you to feel further when you run away from the apps right so you need a strategy you need like a system to approach quitting with you can't just go cold turkey because you're going to fight a losing battle against these scientists and that brings me to point two which is you need to use the taper method which very simply i know is quite a boring answer but it, it like has a hundred percent success rate because we've tested it out right so what you want to do is you want to slowly decrease the intensity or the frequency of use of your addictive substance right so for example it took me three months to quit social media it took me one year to quit porn it took me like a year to quit vaping right because it takes some time because again you've been strengthening these pathways for like 10 years in some cases. So it's gonna take some time to strengthen the right pathways and let the old pathways wither and die. So with the vape, I went from 20 mg nick salts on like a 100 watt electric power, right? Which just adds to the strength of it even more, right? Down to 10 mg. Then I went down from 10 mg down to 6 mg, then down to 3 mg, right? And this is all over a period of months, right? But then because they don't sell anything below 3 mg because those bastards want you to stay addicted, right? I got 0 mg and I mixed it with 3 mg to make 1 mg, then down to 0 0.5 mg, then down to 0 0.2 mg, right? So it's barely got any nicotine in it, but like I can still let my unconscious monkey mind hit that 0 0.2 mg, right? Because it, it just about scratches the itch, but it's making my addiction less worse. And the point of this is to minimize your suffering, to minimize the temptation to relapse, right? Because when you go cold turkey, your mind starts to do something very annoying. It starts to tell you like, oh yeah, if you have a toke, oh like, if you play that video game again, oh like, if you relapse on porn, it's gonna be really awesome. It's gonna feel absolutely life-changing. Like, you should really do that. And when your mind's doing that, it's really hard to resist. So this is why the taper method is so much better because you slowly reduce these things. So once I was at 0 0.2 mg, it was quite easy for me just to move to zero because it's like my body had already adjusted. I'd already kind of like let go of the addiction, right? So when I was at zero, I was like, oh, I don't really want to do this anymore. Threw my vape in the bin, never used it again. It was that simple. And when I quit, it wasn't in the context of like, oh no, I can't be around people who vape because I'm going to relapse. Get away from me. Like it wasn't like that. Like 
when I went to a couple parties, I did actually use a vape, but I used it consciously because I wasn't like hooked to it anymore. I could actually enjoy it. And then when the pie was over, throw it in the bin, never use it again, right? So 99% of the time, I wasn't using it, right? Because I didn't want to, I didn't care. I wasn't addicted to it anymore. But if you have a really strong addictive personality, I'd recommend you don't do that because it's, it's, it's a risky game to play. One thing I will mention though, when you're doing the tape method, you need to maximize your consciousness, right? So what I mean by that is when you use the substance, whilst you're quitting it, whilst you're like deloading it, basically, you want to really pay attention. You really want to be aware of what you're doing while you're doing it. So for example, with vaping, you want to, once the urge comes, you need to like increase your awareness. You'd be like, okay, I'm going to use it, but I'm going to watch myself use it. So really pay attention to when you're grabbing it. Pay attention to when you're picking it up. Be conscious. Pay attention to when you're having the toke. And then pay attention to afterwards when you've let it go. And it's especially important to pay attention to the feeling after you've used the substance, right? After all the dopamines, all of that's gone away. You need to see what you feel like afterwards. And again, don't judge anything. Don't do anything like that. Just pay attention because what will happen slowly is you'll start to realize that you don't actually like this, that your brain's kind of tricking you into using it, that you don't actually need these substances, right? Perfect example is porn, right? We all know what post not clarity feels like, yet so many people are still relapsing, right? Because they forget, they let their brain trick them back into that, right? But for me, when I started <laughs> consciously relapsing, I could see that this is not an activity that I want to do. This just makes me feel trash for like 24, 48 hours afterwards because it drains all of my energy and it makes me just feel yucky and weird. Nowadays though, if that urge does come up, because sometimes it does creep up in my brain, I'm just like, oh no, I don't want to do that because I don't want to feel like trash. Like I'm using rationality and like logic, like a man is supposed to, to overcome these things. So if we want to use like a religious metaphor, it's kind of like strengthening the angel on your shoulder, like the conscious part of yourself whilst also weakening that devil on your shoulder, that dumbass who's telling you, oh yeah, we need to take that another hit. You're weakening him, you're ignoring him. And you're starting to listen to the conscious part of yourself. Now the third and final thing you need to do is you need to fill the vacuum, right? And what I mean by this is these addictions, they've been a part of your life. They're kind of a part of your psychology, part of who you are, right? And if you take that out, it's not gonna feel nice because there's gonna be like a space, a gap, a vacuum within you that the substance used to fill. And it's going to be very, very tempting to fill that vacuum, fill that void with the old addiction, right? Or maybe a new worse one. So we need to fill that vacuum with something constructive. And I don't necessarily just mean like self-improvement habits. I just mean something that actually means something to you, something that you actually care about, right? Because what we want to do is we want to be addicted to things that make our life better in the long run instead of things that make our life worse in the long term and the short term, right? So the perfect example of this is with my little brother. He used to use TikTok compulsively all the time just because everyone else used to. And I kind of explained to him like, wait, bro, name one TikTok that you actually remember or you actually cared about. And he was just like, oh, I don't care about TikTok. I just can't really stop using it. And I was like, okay, look, here's what you want to do. Stop putting your time into TikTok. Get rid of it put all of that time into something that you actually care about, right? So what he did is he stopped using TikTok and he invested all of his time into rugby, which is basically like his purpose, his passion at this point, right? So nowadays, he spends his time watching rugby games, like learning, watching how he could improve his game from these like professionals, practices it in the garden, right? So he's like throwing the ball at like the shed as hard as he can to like practice his passes. And then he's just playing as much as he possibly can. And as a result, he is reaching some elite levels. Like I'm, I'm telling you, top 1% in the country type of levels. And yeah, he had some natural talent, but I don't think he would have reached these peaks if he was still wasting his time on TikTok and video games. So a couple more examples, right? Is instead of smoking weed or getting drunk every single day, go and do some calisthenics in the park. Go join a gym and start building that body that you always wanted, right? Or instead of touching your pee pee before you go to sleep, start reading a book that you actually are interested in learning more about before you go to sleep. Again, it doesn't need to be like some magical self-improvement habit, like just something you care about, something that's not detrimental to your health. Like you, it could even be spending more time with your family. So for me and Shares, we quit Netflix, TikTok and watching random YouTube videos because again, we could see that this wasn't helping us and we didn't even care about the shows that we were watching or anything like that. And we replaced that with reading books and watching productive podcasts. And that was life-changing because learning those things really helped save my degree, right? Because that was getting hard and I was not being productive at all. But like learning and reading about productivity tactics made it so much easier to do work. So like 
I could now do four hours of work in a day and do better than when I was doing eight hours of work in a day, right? And that was just, that just came from reading. So there you go, bro. There's a step-by-step -step guide on the natural method of quitting that me and Shez used to get rid of all of those addictions that literally had us by the balls. And just to quickly recap, do not go cold turkey because you're going to relapse and then you're going to fall into this guilt shame cycle. So please don't do that. Use the conscious taper method, right? Where you taper off the strength of what you're doing, but you're also consciously aware of what you're doing, right? So you can start understanding that this isn't an activity you want to spend your time doing anyway. And then finally, you need to fill the void, fill the vacuum that is left when you stop doing these substances, right? So just to end off, here are some of the new addictions that I have, right? That have benefited my life tremendously. So first we have meditation, then we have journaling, reading, doing deep work on our business, spending time outside and getting high quality sleep. And again, bro, I want to emphasize that I like doing these things. I find these things fun because when I don't do them, I don't feel as good, right? So it's kind of like I'm intrinsically motivated to do these things. Plus, at the same time, they're making my future self's life better. So it's kind of like a win-win in the present and in the future. So why would you not give yourself that gift? It's just a disservice not to do that. And again, life's not perfect. Life's never going to be like beautifully, wonderfully perfect. Like I still like relapse on sugar here and there, like once a month or something like that when I'm feeling a bit compulsive. But 99% of the time, I'm living how I want to live, right? And it's in like this long-term gratification way where I'm benefiting my future self. Yeah, bro, if you're interested in living more of a conscious, healthy and productive lifestyle, I'd be grateful if you could subscribe to the channel because, you know, it helps a small channel grow and stuff like that. But yeah, bro, in the meantime, if you're conscious that there's like some vice that's holding you back in life, please start to do these things because I promise you it's going to make a world of difference if you give it enough time. So yeah, man, just get on with it.